Did you know that you, you never have to pay rent ever again? Did you know that a home becomes most people's largest investment and largest purchase? And the second you don't have a mortgage payment, you're wealthy. Most millionaires own their home flat out, but you have to get a home first. What are you, what are you doing kinda, there, buddy? It's kind of cute. Well, hmm? I guess that's a message for you guys. So let's get right into the tips that you need to learn and the steps on how you buy a house. Number one most important step is knowing how much house you can afford. You need to know what you can afford. If you don't follow this step, it's going to break you. And this is when buying a house actually becomes a liability instead of an asset. Buying a house can be super emotional. So you really have to get down and be real with yourself on what you can afford. Your house payment should never be more than about a quarter of your income. So keep that in mind. You can always use a Google calculator to figure out how much house you can afford. And when you're calculating your mortgage payment, remember that your monthly payment is much more than just that number. It can include your taxes, your insurance, your utilities, HOA, your mortgage insurance if you have it, which I do not recommend if possible. There are so many videos out there telling you and they're confusing if you should buy a house, if you should not buy a house. And I'm here to tell you that buying a house is always a good investment if you do it the right way. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. Once you've realized how much house you can afford, you need to start saving for your down payment. And if you mess this step up, you're really screwed. You need to save up. You can put down 0% to as much as you want up to buying the house outright up front. Once you put down 20%, your PMI or your personal mortgage insurance goes away. Um, so that is what's recommended. Put down 20% at least but there are options. There are first time home buyer grants and different things like that that will help cover this down payment. But when you do a down payment, you always need to make sure that you have money left over for different expenditures, such as living, um, paying your mortgage and your rent. So it's super important. You can't put all of the money that you own into your down payment. And also remember that there's other costs associated with closing a house that are not part of your down payment. These include five to 9% these include an inspection, just your title fees and escrow, things like that, that you can leverage with the seller. But these are also other fees you should be aware of. The next step is making sure you have a good credit score and make sure you check out our credit score video that we did where we talk about ways you can increase your credit score. The reason this is important with buying a home is because it'll allow you to get a lower rate, which will save you thousands upon thousands of dollars throughout the course of your loan. The next step is to get pre-approved. And what this is, is basically just a letter that says how much house you can afford. To do this, you go into your lender and you, they look at your assets, your liabilities, and your credit score, your income, and they tell you how much house you can afford. Now, afford is kind of a scary word. You need to watch out for that. Refer back to step one on the calculations that you did. That's the number you should be focusing on. Anyway, you take this, this paper to the sellers when you put an offer in for a house and it shows them that you're interested and you're ready to go. Step number five, you need to find your real estate agent. Now this is a super important step because you need to find someone that's trustworthy and that will actually has your best interest in mind. So you need to shop around. Don't just go with the first one you see, or I know Dave Ramsey talks about this a lot. Don't just go with your family member because they just got their license. Make sure you find someone that will get you the best deal possible. I almost lost my last purchase, but thanks to my agent, we were able to pull through and get it. He saved the day and probably not very many agents could do what he did. Be careful about signing any documents with agents before you actually buy a house because you could get stuck with that agent. Lots of the times they have something where if you sign a paper, you have to use that agent for 60 days and whatever house you buy, they will end up getting the commission on that. So just be careful, don't sign anything until you're ready to use that specific agent. And you can shop agents. For sure. The next step and the step you've all been waiting for, find your house. Your agent has access to a lot of cool websites that you probably don't, but it should also be up to you to travel different neighborhoods, search the web, see what you can find as well. And when you find that perfect house, it's not gonna be your perfect house. It may have some things that weren't quite what you were expecting, but this is where it's important to create a list of priorities and you need to learn to let some things on the lower priority list, you need to let those go because no house is absolutely perfect for everybody. Once you find your perfect house, submit that offer. Your agent will help you do it perfectly and you can get that all submitted so that you can start on this process. This process is probably some of the most, it's probably one of the most exciting and it's stressful intense. periods. Usually your offer is good for about 24 hours and you're waiting for a response or a counter offer. 
and it's so exciting, but you can't even sleep that night. After your offer is accepted, it's time to start shopping for a rate. You look around at all the different lenders, there are so many out there, and it's incredibly important that you shop them based on different traits that they have. And one of the most important things you're going to be looking at is their rate. Now, a rate is a very small percentage usually, but think about this, on a $300,000 house loan, an increase of 0.5% on your rate is about $83 a month. And that turns out to be about $30,000 over the course of the loan. That's huge. It's a lot of money. And I was able to shop around between three or four different lenders and I was able to decrease my rate by about 0.5%. So happy we did it. It saved me hundreds of dollars already. And the lender can work with you. They can lower down the rate, so you just have to bargain with them. So there's a lot more after this process, but now that you've hired your team, you're good to go. Your real estate agent and your lender, they're there to help you. They will walk you through the process. It can be very confusing, but now they're on your team and they're not trying to trick you. There are a lot of ups and downs. It's a roller coaster ride. It's very emotional. It can be stressful, but guys, you're on your way to becoming a homeowner and it's so exciting. And this is one of the biggest investments you guys can make. So we're super excited for you. We want you to get that home. Thanks for watching this video. Once again, if you found value in it, drop us a like, drop us a comment if you have any other questions with buying a home. And make sure you subscribe if you haven't already and check out some of our other videos for more tips on how you can be financially independent and wealthy. Catch you later. See you later.